Welcome back. My name is Minister Robert Lee Williams from Prophetic Information Ministries and God's Miracle Ministry. Well, this is day seven on the teaching series on the 10 days of all. Today is September the 27th, 2017. And today's teaching is going to be on the sin of greed. That's right, the sin of greed. Let's find out what this is all about. Greed is defined as the ignorant desire to possess wealth, goods, or objects of value with the intent to keep it for ourselves, far beyond the designate of basis, basic survival or comfort. We begin our study by nothing, two elements of greed. But before I get into this, this is something we're all guilty of, is greed. We want all the money we can get our hands on, or get, you know, material items for ourselves. We want this, we want that, we want a new car, we want a new house, we want a new hot tub, we want a new RV or, or something in that nature. We want and we want and we want. And, and when we get a lot of money, for instance, we kind of want to hang on to that for ourselves. You know, I am very, very guilty in my past life, you know, in, in being greedy with my tithes and offering. You know, that's hard to admit to. But, you know, I remember for many years I'd only give a dollar or two in the collection plate, you know, maybe five dollars if I'm lucky. But you know, that was giving me a curse by God for being greedy. I was hurting myself because I didn't trust God back then. I didn't trust Him. I didn't trust His Word. And guess who suffered for it? Me and my family at the time. But I don't want to be greedy anymore. I wanted the back of poverty off of me. I wanted that curse of poverty gone. And you know, I'm gonna at the end here, I'm gonna give you some good examples of when I did give, when God told me to, and the blessing that I'm still getting today. Okay, let's go on to today's teaching. Greed involves ignorant desire. Most of the seven deadly sins are hyper desires, desires that are out of control and out of proportion to what is healthy and life-giving. In case of greed, the desires to possess wealth, goods, or objects of value, it is not sinful in and of itself. Rather, it is the intense preoccupation and devotion to the uh, 
acquisition of wealth, goods, and objects. That is one of the defining characteristics of the sin of greed. Two, greed is selfish, is self-focused. The other defining characteristic of greed is that the aim of accumulation, accumulating wealth and possession. It is benefit of me, myself, and I. Greed is a sin. Not simply because I am in possession of too much, but because I'm completely oblivious to how my excess wealth could benefit and bless others. Taking these two taking these two considerations together, we see that a moderated desire for wealth, coupled with the intent to bless others through it, is not greed. In fact, this outlook may be a particular godly expression of a heart that has been transformed by God's grace. Scriptures that warn us about greed. Warning against greed are possessive throughout Scripture. We look at four of them right now. Ecclesiastics 5.10 Whosoever loves money never has money enough. And whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. This too is meaningless. Isaiah 58.5 Woe to you who add house to house Let's start over again. Woe to you who add house to house and join fields to fields till no space is left and you live alone in the land. Ephesians 5.5 5. For of this you can be sure no immoral impure or greedy person such as a man is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. First Timothy 6, 9, and 10 People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plague men into run, run and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Oh, that's for sure. In discussing these scriptures and thinking out loud together as we, as to why greed is so deadly, it was the passage from Isaiah and Ephesians that seemed to offer the greatest insights into power of greed to inherit with our ability to experience the good life. God warns in Isaiah 5 8 that a life built on accumulating expansion, upward mobility, is one 
that is unjust because it fails to account for the needs of one's neighbors. A few people noted that living a life of greed ultimately leads to isolation simply because as we expand our territory we simultaneously push others away. Ephesians 5 5 warns resonate with many of us because it underscored that a posture of greed is literally an anti-gospel and anti-Christ. When you take a moment to think about it, the gospel story is one of anti-greed. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through he was rich. Yet for your sake, he become poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Second Chronicles 8 and 9 Jesus holds and ignorant desires to love and rescue us, and impoverish himself so that we might be enriched. That's why you can't inherit God's kingdom if you live inside of greed. Greed is a brick wall that stops the kingdom's life from flowing into you and through you. Dangers. The danger of greed. There is real terrifying story in scripture about a rich young ruler whose greed blinds him to one of the most incredible opportunities ever offered. It's found in Matthew 19 verse 16 to 22. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what is a good thing I must do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which one? He required... Jesus replied, You should not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You should not steal. You should not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept. The young man said, What do I still lack? Jesus answered, If you want to be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give it to the poor, and you will have treasures in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great well, here is this rich young ruler who is wealthy both in money and material, but who cannot let go of his wealth because his wealth was his treasure. Even a personal invitation by Jesus couldn't dislodge the hole that wealth had on him. Did the, did the rich young ruler recognize his greed issue? 
Did he ever regret his decision to turn Jesus' offer down? We'll never know. What we do know is that this man greed subtly but blinded him to a once in a lifetime opportunity to follow Jesus as a disciple. That's why greed is so dangerous. We can be caught up in its web and not even know it. How many of us would name greed is a sin we struggle with? Culturally, we were told in a thousand ways, each day greed is good, and that it is normal and no big deal. Scripture and life, if we're paying attention, tells us differently. Dealing with greed. Excuse me here. Dealing with greed, whether we want to particularly deal with greed before it becomes a problem or interrupts greed, currently holds on our hearts. Vices are cured by their contrary. Sin is put to death through cultivation and righteousness. Experience tells us that simply trying to not sin won't work. Therefore, that's way we can combat greed is to commit to focus generosity roots in the recognition that where your treasure is is where the heart will be also. It's in Matthew 6, 21. Here are some ideas for that we can do. We can sponsor a child. Commit to tithe, giving 10% of one's income to their church or ministry. Once a week, spend some time, spend, once a week, spend some of your money on someone else to a degree that the action qualifies as generosity and self-sacrificial. While we're often oblivious to its seductive pull in our lives, greed continually calls us, tempting us into a life that runs against the grain of Jesus. Love, grace, and hope. Useless we're in participating in spiritual discipline of financial generosity and sacrificial greed will likely take root in our hearts and lives. Once it does, we'll find that despite our best intentions, our life will have more and more of what doesn't matter and less and less of what does. Confession, Confessions of Greed Greed leads to a lonely place. I know because for a short time in my life, I lived there.
It is a cruel master when you become its slave. Nothing is enough. Nothing can satisfy. Worse yet, it deceives us into thinking we will run out of the very thing that often keeps us locked in its grasp. The Bible warns us about greed repeatedly. Look in Luke twelve fifteen tells us then he said beware guard against every kind of greed life is not measured by how much you own when the Bible even tells us to beware of something without a good cause confessing confessing greed When we worship the things of the world, we do not worship the Lord. We cannot serve two masters. In our worship of the world, we end up making choices that hurt each other, that hurts others and ourselves. So we put, so put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you have nothing to do with sexual immorality, impurity, lust, and evil desires. Don't be greedy. For a greedy person is an adulterer, worshiping the things of this world. Colossians 3.5 if you want to confess greed in your life, pray, first pray with the Bible verses below. Then read the question one by one. Answer them carefully. Confess other areas in your life that are controlled by greed instead of God. Be honest. This is between you and Him. Every yes answer means sin in your life. N name it to God. Let there be no excuse for it. Just admit it and ask for forgiveness. Prayer Acts 20.35 In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself, said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Confess. Have you robbed God by withholding His due of time, talent, and money? Have you given less than a tenth of your income for God's work? Have you failed to support mission work, either in prayer or in offerings? It sounds strange to ask, if we rob God of what he gives us. But the depth truth is that God provides everything to us and we will show if we can be trusted with it. We have all met people who are happy to take. Are they just as happy to give? Are we this way? Or how about giving on my terms? We want to give what we no longer need or want to whom we choose. 
Do you disregard what God ask, is asking us to do? And to do joyfully. God tells us what He wants us to do. God tells us what He wants for us. He lets us know where we can help, especially when we pray about it. Perhaps we are called to give more out of our personal time to serving others. Maybe it's donating to a Pacific charity, a Christian radio station, a friend or family member in need. While we confess greed in our lives, we can combat it by giving. The most important element, giving God's way, which he tells us in our heart. You know, as I said, I have been a greedy person most of my life. And where has it gotten me? Nowhere. Until I started doing things God's way. And then God started blessing me because I was getting rid of the greed in my life. I went through spiritual deliverance you know, a few times in my life or in my within the last 17 years. Um, God has been changing me. You know, I'm going to be honest with you and I want you to be honest with yourself. Maybe you can relate to what I'm going to tell you. You know, all my life, I've been greedy when it comes to giving and church offerings. Did I give my 10% like I was supposed to? Nope, I did not. I'd give a dollar, two dollars, maybe five dollars if they were lucky. You know, was God happy with me? Absolutely not. Did he bless me? Not that much at all. You know, driving in, in cities, I'd always look at other people's houses. You know, especially when you go to the rich neighborhoods. Wow, you've got, you know, probably four or five bedrooms there and a swimming pool in the backyard and nice cars. And there's a lot of these houses, hundreds of them. And I always say, God, what's wrong here? How come they got all this stuff and I don't? Maybe, just maybe, I'm not saying all of them because they're probably not, I don't know. But maybe they did give their 10%. Maybe they went way beyond their 10% and, and started giving some of their income to needy people or to different charities or something, but they're always helping somebody. Maybe God bless them. Give them a better job. Give them better education. You know, we don't know. But I always ask that question. What I like to live in a nice big house? Yes and no. You know, I don't need no big fancy four or five bedroom house. I don't need that, you know. I'm a single guy now. You know, right now I'm living with my son. Because, you know, I went through a divorce a while back. And, and, and back, you know, my wife got remarried. 
and that's fine with me. But since all that, and since I started living here, you know, my life has really begun to change. I'd say for the better. Why do I say that? Well, it's because when I first came here a little over three years ago, I uh, to Kansas City and lived with my son. The first week I was here was involved in a car wreck. And yeah, I got whiplash and little back problems out of it back then. And, you know, after seeing an attorney and going to the emergency room and seeing a chiropractor three days a week for three months, you know, I did get a loss settlement out of it. And it was $14,000, but I didn't get no $14,000. I had medical bills that came out of that. And I had $5,000 in attorney's fees. So I saw close to $6,000. But I took $3,000 and got me another pickup truck. But there's a whole story behind that. Because, you know, there, there's a whole story behind it. You know, I've said it in some of my other videos, but I'm not going to go into it now because, you know, the video is getting a little long. But, I want to tell you another story about giving an offering. Uh, about a little after two and a half years ago, a friend of mine took me to a home meeting and they had a prophet there, which I did know. I haven't seen him in a long time. And I'm going to tell you his name. It's Robert, uh, Bob Griffin. Some of you may know him, some of you may not. But he was at the, doing this home meeting for a couple of days. And the first day we were late getting there and end up sitting in the kitchen in the corner. I couldn't sit in the living room, so I, could, I couldn't even see the guy teaching. I was sitting by a speaker. Well, I didn't like that none, but, you know, I, was, I, I sat there and listened. And after the meeting, I went up and talked to him. And then I asked him a question. Because, you know, he remembered me, but I asked him a question. I said, do you ever have a shofar blown in here? He said, oh, do you have one? I said, yeah. He said, tomorrow, bring it, and I'll have you blow it. So the next day I did, and I said, I got to sit next to him on the couch. And when he wanted me to blow the shofar, I did. And then when it come offering time, I had a $5 bill in my wallet and I had a $50 bill in my wallet. Well, I fill out the envelope and I put the $5 bill in there because I wanted to keep the $50. Well, you could say the Lord spoke to me then. He said, Robert, do you want a $5 blessing or do you want a $50 blessing? I'm sitting there and said, oh, wow, God's speaking to me. I took that $5 bill out and I put that 50 in there. And I put that in the offering. You know, I've never done nothing like that before. And you know, two weeks later, you know, I opened up a lawn service and two weeks later, I'm getting a phone call from a franchise here in the Kansas City area. And they want me to take over their lawn contract. And I, I said, okay, how much have you been paying your old people? He said, $30 a lawn. But he said, they stopped coming. He said, what I'm willing to offer you is $50 a lawn. And they have five restaurants. That's $250 a week because they wanted me to do it on weekly. And that's $1,000 a month. And you know, 
Oh, I took that contract. And about, oh, I'd say three weeks into mowing grass, I was sitting in this restaurant and I was eating and the Lord speaks to me. He said, Robert, this is your $50 blessing. I said, wow, $50 blessing that I did, I gave to that prophet. Now, each restaurant is $50 each time I mow it. And some of these restaurants are very small. You know, I could get, I could get some of these restaurants done no more than 15, 20 minutes at the max. And that's a blessing from God. I'm on my third year of mowing the grass. But right now, my son's doing it because I've been out on a uh, foot operation and he's getting the money now. So I'm not getting any of it. But when we're obedient to God, He will bless us. And I'll tell you another incident. You know, I'm on disability right now. And I only make $496.50 a month. That's all I get to live on. You know, I used to, you know, supplement my income by mowing grass. But now I can't even do that. Because I'm out on a foot operation. I'm not supposed to put any weight on my foot. And I'm going in two months on this now. And now I'm hurting for income. But I want to tell you, when I did get my back settlement uh, out of disability, and I knew that God wanted me to tie 10% of that, well, we're talking about a $1,000 donation. And I knew I had to, to do that. I wanted to do that. Well, they have a homeless mission in Wichita, Kansas. And I was going to go down to uh, Wichita Falls, Texas to see my dad and my sister. And, and I was passing through Wichita, Kansas, and I stopped, and I, and I had an appointment to stop by and, and give this minister a donation. Well, he didn't show up because his wife the day before got put in the hospital for surgery. But I didn't leave this donation. You know, it was going to be $300. But anyway, I went and saw my dad. And on the last day there, I was praying because, man, God really had it on my heart. I need to donate to this ministry. But I wasn't satisfied with a $300 donation. So I asked God, what do you want me to give this ministry? Well, when I lay down to go to sleep and I closed my eyes, this figure in red letters, the red numbers, came across, lit up in both of my eyes, and it was six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. You know what I said? I said to the Lord, Are you crazy? Six hundred dollars? That's a lot of money. But I knew. It was God. And I knew I had to give him $600. I have never, ever in my life given that kind of money in an offering. You know, I, I think $50, I think, with it, when I did that, well, first $50 was the biggest donation I ever gave. Now, from $50 to $600, that was stretching my faith. But like I said, I wanted to break this poverty off of my life. So I was obedient to God. So I went to Wichita, Kansas, met up with the minister. He gave me the tour of his, his, his ministry because I've never been there in his building. And then you know, I gave him the story. And I said, 
here six hundred dollars God told me to give this to you and I did have I seen a you know like a blessing from God on this six hundred dollars the seed I plant did I get the fruit of that six hundred dollars yet no not yet I'm still waiting but you know I, I'm beginning to give more than I ever did and one thing I did promise God and to myself that I would never, ever give a single dollar bill in a donation plate ever again. Because that's insulting. That's not even tipping God for all the blessings He's given me all my life. You know, Think about yourself. What have you done? Were you just as guilty as I was of giving a dollar or two or five dollars in the offering plate? You know, what is, ask God what He wants you to give. You know, sometimes we need to give when it hurts. But if we be obedient, if we are obedient unto God in doing what He wants, He will bless us. He really will. And I want to see the spirit of greed, the sin of greed, and the spirit of poverty come off of you. You know, I would love to pray for you for the sin of greed and the spirit of poverty to come off of you. But I'm not going to because the Lord doesn't want me to do that right now. Why? Because he wants you to get with him. Spend some time with him after this video or sometime today. And he wants you to repent to him. He wants you to come to him either on your knees or on your face before God. You know, if you can't get on your knees, that's understandable. But he wants you to repent of greed. And to get the spirit of poverty off of you. He loves you. He loves me. You know, I'm still working on giving. You know, right now... Like I said, I only get the $496 a month. And yes, it has been a very long time. A few years now, I do believe, that I have ever gotten a donation from my website, from my ministry. You know, I know I need to update my website, but it's been up for several years. And yes, in the past, I have got some donations. But nothing in a few years. You know, I have asked for donations, but I haven't got a dollar. But, you know, I'm not asking for any donations right now. But if you want to give me a donation to help me out with my ministry, so maybe I can get some, you know, better equipment or a better video camera or whatever. You know, you can do that if you want. I'll leave my mailing address. Or you can donate off the website at propheticinformationministries.com or God's Miracle Ministry ministry.com by PayPal or you can mail it in or if you want to call me on the phone you can do a credit card that way or mail it in but 
That's up to you. That's between you and God. But I think I'm going to go ahead and close because this video is getting a little long. But I want you to know that God loves you. And so do I. He wants to change your life. During this 10 days of repentance, He's cleaning us, and cleaning us all up from our sins. And some things I've never even heard of before. Like prayerlessness, like I just did yesterday. Never heard of that before. But, but the spirit of greed, yeah, I've heard of that one before. And I see this, the fruits of this ungodly sin. And I don't like it. I've had many prophets prophesy to me that I would be bringing in thousands of dollars into the kingdom of God. And the income I would get yeah, I never will forget this one prophet gave, gave me this prophecy years ago. He said that you would be bringing money into the kingdom and I'd be giving away up to 90% of my income. But the 10% I would keep would be as much or as more than the natural CEOs of this world would make. You know, you get some big CEOs out there, and they make several millions of dollars every year. If I'm keeping that, I'm giving away millions of dollars. And I went to, you know, I joined a church in 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 the the Dallas area, Dallas Fort Worth area, and the first time I was there. You know, all, a whole bunch of us came up for prayer. And the pastor came up to me and didn't even know who in the heck I was. You know, this pastor said that God was going to bless you financially. You'd be getting in thousands of dollars for the kingdom. I didn't tell her anything about this other prophecy. This is what God was telling this pastor. You know, I'm still waiting for that to come to pass. Yeah, and one dream I had that somebody would give me $82 million one time because this guy was dying. Was going to give me $82 million. Have I seen that yet? Nope. But I'm waiting and I'm praying all this stuff in. And I will give up to 90% of that away. I'm going to help the hurting people because I know how it is to hurt. I'll set up a fund that helps the homeless. People need help with their utilities or food or wherever God tells me to, to donate to. I will. I'm, and, and I'll give to other churches that need a helping hand. You know, I don't need to be greedy, and I'm not going to be greedy with any of it. I'm not going to be greedy anymore. I am going to bless God's people. But I'm just waiting on God to give me that seed money. And I'm going to pray in that seed money. Do I know how, kind of, how God's going to do this? Yes, I do. And it is with the instantaneous healing gift. But, you know, we have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Healing is just part of it. But you get some, you pray for somebody and they get up out of a wheelchair like Jesus used to do in the apostles. It's written in the Bible. Do you know what that would do? Their faith level would go skyrocketing. Not only their face, but 
the faith of people around the world. And they will donate to that because they see the power of God working. Do you have the power of God so He can work in your lives? If you want that kind of power to fulfill your destiny or what God has promised you, then you must clean up your life, just like I'm cleaning up my life. You know, I taught on lust yesterday, and that tried to come in to me last night. And I had to pray that off. And I did. I prayed it off. And I rolled over and went back to sleep. I wasn't going to give lust any of my time anymore. You know, the devil will flee from you. And he did. He fled. Because he could not get to me anymore. So, I want to see you set free from greed and poverty. And any other sin you may have, I would encourage you to go back and watch the whole series of the Ten Days of All. You know, I've got a few more days of teaching. What I'm teaching on tomorrow, I have no clue. But God is putting this all together, and I thank God for this. Well, I'm going to close now, and I want to thank you for watching this whole video. Thank you for listening. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please hit the subscribe button today. Listen to the teachings that God gives me to give and the dreams and visions that I get. I dream every night. I have all my life. I've had hundreds of dreams come to pass. Not all of them yet, but hundreds of them have. But I'm just a messenger from God. But I just want to thank you. And I want you to pray when you get off. When I when I turn this when you turn the computer off, I want you to pray about greed and poverty. Ask God to forgive you and to change your life. And he will. Well, I'm gonna close now. But this is Minister Robert Lee Williams from Prophetic Information Ministries and God's Miracle Ministry.com. And like I said, I'm going to leave my address below just in case God's talking to you about donating into my ministries. So take care. God bless. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow. And take care.